Okay, so I am going to jump into this and hopefully I can do this without screwing this up. So this is something a little bit new. I haven't done this in the past and this is from, what I'm gonna do is actually I'll do it this way. It's from a daily, see, and I can't get these stupid ads to go away. So let me try to turn these ads. And nope, I didn't wanna do that. All right. Okay. So this is a Daily Mail article called Judge Apologizes to Loving Father Who Is Prevented from Seeing His Children Who Are Alienated from Him After Their Mother Spent Years Demonizing Him. I'm going to go ahead and put this in reader view because that'll make it a little bit easier. Now, before I dive into this, I just want to say that I, I realize that this is one of the worst case scenarios for people. I know there's people who are dealing with this. And I just wanted to, to chat a little bit about it and then, and then offer some, some thoughts. I mean, because this is pretty, pretty much like the worst case, worst case scenario. And it says, uh, a, father is, uh, a father has given up his rights to see his children after their mother waged a vicious campaign demonizing him and alienating them from him. Family court judge Stephen uh, Will Blood today apologized to the father, who he said was an intelligent man who plainly loves his children. He said the father had spent eight years fighting for his children in a heartbreaking and expensive case. Okay, so I'm going to pause right there for a moment. So here, here's the, the first thing I want to say. And I know that this isn't necessarily possible for a lot of people. But it is critically important you understand the enemy, what you're dealing with from the beginning. Every day that you're in denial on what exactly is going on, is a day that sets up these type of scenarios. John says, did the judge give back all his legal fees too? No, and we'll get into that in a moment. Oh, actually, I forgot I could post that. Um, so, I, and, it, and it's tough because if you don't understand what you're dealing with, you're gonna be, you're gonna be scooting on down the road. I, I, okay, let me back up. I was having a conversation with a, with a friend of mine who's getting ready to go through this. And, I mean, I can see the writing on the wall. And he was saying, you know, well, my, my potential ex says they're not going to fight for custody. It's 50-50. You know, why would they say that if they don't mean it? And what I said to them, and what I will say to all of you, if they can... If they can keep you naive, if they can keep you lulled into a false a sense of security and then spring their trap on you when they end up, or when you all end up in family court, it's a strategic move for them. And eh, nothing to see here. Everything's fine. We'll work it out. Work it all out. I've, I've seen that happen to a ton of people. Hell, on a certain extent, it happened with me. Um, the the difference, is, yeah. Let's see. James says they uh, they love to do that, which is absolutely true. Thanks for hanging out with us today, James. Appreciate it. And uh, so it's it's one of those things that you know we 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 have to get to people in the early parts of this so that they understand. And I think it's only common that people think, well, all the, this isn't this isn't going to happen to me. This isn't that story. They're not like that. Nobody, you know, you know, they're not going to alienate their kids. They wouldn't even dream of doing that for uh, to their own child. And then as most of us know and have experienced, you get into the fight, you get your sucker punch, and then you're trying to come back from that. What I would say or what I would encourage people to do, and this is what I did. I mean, I was, I was absolutely naive. I absolutely was naive. I didn't want to believe that I could be in one of these situations. However, what I did do is I made different, I made decisions with the what-if mode. It's like, okay, 
I'm not going to completely expose myself. I'm not going to completely go off the deep end and, you know, treat this like a war, which I wish I would have. But, but at the same time, I'm going to be cautious of how I respond, what I say, what I agree to on paper, you know, that whole thing. I mean, the biggest mistake I probably did is I moved out and I was like, okay, you know, I'm not going to push the 50-50 thing right off the bat. And as is typical in these situations, she took physical possession, reduced the agreed upon time, and then I was stuck fighting, fighting for time. Okay, so let me get back to the next part of this. And uh, the judge, then it goes on to say, and a scathing attack, Judge Wild Blood blamed the mother, pointing out her children would suffer long term harm as a result of her bitter actions. Attempts to move the children from their mother's home to their father's home failed, and the man has now ended an eight-year legal fight for contact with them. Judge Wildblood, the chief family judge in Bristol, gave this is obviously UK, uh, gave details of the case in a written ruling published online following a private family court hearing. Now, some of you are probably going to be thinking, okay, she's she's been you know, you're like, wait a minute, what the hell? The, the dad's like giving up. The judge is slamming the mother for doing this. You know, how, how is this not being rectified? Let me, before I jump into this, let me see where, what else we have going on. John says, uh, Dwayne, in my case, I was lucky that a judge said to the narc, why are you bringing this to my court? Figure it out on your own. See, and I think John, this is, it, as this is coming out more and more and people are realizing, and I, I think judges have realized it, you know, I mean, they've been living this garbage, but I mean, there's getting more awareness to it, which is, which is helping. I remember when I started my situation, I was under the impression that in California, it was a pro mom state and, you know, it would be highly unlikely, highly unlikely for me to get 50-50. I've since come to realize that that's not the case in a lot of states anymore, uh, but there is that, uh, there is that, um, what's the word I'm looking for, where you, you know, your, your belief or your assumption or, or uh, I can't remember the word. So, and I, and I haven't really talked about this stuff and a lot, right? I mean, it's a lot of the older videos where I really, really hit this, and this article kind of just really brought it back to me. Um, <laughs> Lyle says, I have a trick to find out if someone is loyal to you to keep your privacy it's obvious. I'm sure you know uh, what it is. I know what it is for me. It's like leak just a little bit and see what they do with it. All right. Let me see what else we got. I'm trying to catch back up. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back into this. Um, oh, see, I scroll. I need to scroll back up. Uh, now this is where it even gets more more frustrating. The judge said a psychiatrist involved had suggested that the woman had allowed or possibly encouraged the demonization of her former partner. He said the family court could not be identified. Wait a minute. He said the family could not be identified, has not said how many children are involved or given their names, and has not said where the hearing was sta uh, staged, but said the public should be made aware of the case. He said it was an example of how badly wrong things can go and of how complex cases are with one parent alienates a child from another. Now, okay, so I want to I get back into the second part of this. And it, it, see, in a lot of ways, the narcissist, I'll just say it that way, the narcissist or the toxic person in a divorce has nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. 
because they can play these games and if they can get a favorable favorable ruling from the beginning, get people to believe them, you can get into a situation like what this is at. And I mean, and effectively what's, what this is saying is because this person has damaged the relationship with the, with the kids so much, the professionals are now saying, well, it's wrong what they did, but, you know, oh well. It'd be harder for the kids to rip them from this, which is really messed up. I mean, it's just, it kind of irritates me even thinking about it because the idea is, well, they're basically, the kids are basically stable. Even though they've been turned and they hate this other parent now, it's, it's better for them, the kids, just to live in that environment. Are you effing kidding me? Seriously? There has to be consequences for this. It, like like what, uh, I, I don't know if it's John or whoever said before, you know, where they give them back their money. There has to be consequences. Every time something like that, and I know this is a UK story, but I know this has happened in the States. I, don't, I haven't heard of a recent story that's happened, you know, maybe in the last year or so, but I've heard this type of story in the past. The same type of thing. It's like, oh, well, yeah, there's alienation. Oh, but, you know, it would just be too traumatic to rip the kids out of the arms of the envir- only environment they know. And, eh, oh well, you know, dad hasn't been in, or, you know, whatever. The, the parent hasn't, the other parent hasn't been in, the, been with them for so many years that it's, you know, it's a moot point at this point, which is not true, right? You, you are completely setting, you, I mean, I know that they don't want to throw, well, unless, <laughs> unless you're behind a child support, then they'll throw you in jail. But it's like they, they don't want to do this, and they absolutely should. They, there should absolutely be consequences. Because every time something like this happens, every time this occurs, it encourages someone else to do it. It encourages someone else to say, well, what the hell? I'll roll the dice. What's the worst that's going to happen? Okay, I get a strongly worded document in private. Even if the judge puts it out in public, there's no names. It's all it's all private, so no one will ever know. Rescued by Mary says, alienation should be punishable with imprisonment. Yeah. Or at the very least, it should be a forced removal of those kids. But, uh, I mean, either way, those kids are, are screwed. They're, they're damaged, you know, they are completely damaged. Let me see what else everyone else is saying. Oh, JBF. Let's see what... uh, Perception. Thank thank you, Daisy. (laughs) That's the word I couldn't remember was the perception that people have is it's, you're going to lose. You know, I don't know how many times I've heard people say, if you're the guy, well, typically they they use a different metaphor, but if they say, if you're the male, you're going to lose. It's just automatic. That is... Maybe there's some truth to it, but if you go in thinking that, you've already lost, right? I mean, if I would have went in and said, well, why am I even going to try to spend a bunch of money to save a relationship with my kids? Because I'm going to lose. It's it. Everybody knows it. I'm a man. She's the woman. She's going to get full custody. I'm not going to get anything. I'm just going to hand over my wallet, give my kids away, and that's the way it's going to be. And, you know, I mean, there is a period of time where... I mean, that idea crossed my mind. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? You know, I'm going to destroy, you know, destroy the rest of my future trying to fight a losing battle. You got to fight. You got to at least give it a try. JBF says, my judge sees through it. My girl's attorney see exactly what is happening. We have, we have three contempt charges against their mother and a 30-day suspended jail sentence, and she still does not stop. But instead of taking action after clearly saying their mother is abusing them, the girls, uh, the girls later, later just say it's a tough situation. Or the girl's lawyer says it's a tough dis- situation. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, there has to be consequences. See, I know I talked about this in the past, and that's why I think equal shared parenting is an incredibly important thing because if, if it starts out 
boom, 50, 50, you already got, you, you already got what you're probably going to get, right? If everyone's, if, if someone's being, a, if a, unless somebody is walking away from the kids or they're in, you know, jail or something, something significant happens, it's probably going to be 50, 50. So just make it 50, 50. Don't allow the other person the opportunity to have that uninterrupted time with the kids to plant those seeds. And guys, it's, it, well, okay, I think everyone here dealing with it knows this, but for somebody who is just watching this going, holy crap, this happens? It's not completely, you know, okay, guys, let's sit down and we're going to have, we're going to talk about your dad and your dad is Satan. Didn't you ever notice the horns? I mean, it's not out in the open. It's very subtle. It's very manipulative. It's very covert. It's very pointed. It's, it's manipulation. It's, it's bringing up things. It's like setting up a, a scenario to where the other one parent does something, and then you say things, and then you kind of just let them, oh, wow, look what just transpired. My mom did that to me all the time. She would do things, I believe, she would do things such as, oh, your dad's going to come pick you up on Saturday. Really? You know, this is before cell phones, because <laughs> as you can tell, I'm old, <laughs> older. And uh, I would sit in the window as a young, young teenager, I think teen, might, might have been preteen, looking out that window, looking at the clock, saying, Mom, what, what time is he supposed to be here? Well, he's supposed to be here at noon, you know, from 3.30 to about, you know, or from 11.30, I mean, to about 2 o'clock, I'm sitting in the window waiting for him to show up. And not understanding why he, why he wouldn't show up. That's the type of shit that they do. This, sorry. Beep. That's the type of stuff that happens. So let me, let me jump. Let me look and see what else everyone is saying. Oh, this is a good one. Lyle says, I, I said to my sister, don't tell my ex but I'm going to Canada, <laughs> but don't, uh, but do not tell anyone else. See if Canada comes up from some, from, and from whom that's pretty funny. Uh, it's sad you have to do that Lyle, but, um, that's yeah. Okay. Let me look through the comments. Actually, I think I ended up scrolling up. So now I'm trying to get caught back up. So I apologize. John says, Dwayne, keep in mind that the lawyers are loving every minute of this and enable and lie to women, well, to either, both parties, to do this. I, what I mean is, is that they'll also tell you, oh, no, you know, they won't, you know, we'll get you 50-50 and this won't happen. And then once they take all your money and you're out of money, it's like, oh, well, sorry, sometimes, you know, you win some, you lose some. Anyways, uh, enable the lie for a woman to do this, my... Ex narc ended up with an empty bank account, and the kids are going to hate her now. Yeah, it's just it's a disaster all the way around, and it should. I mean, and creating a situation where where kids equal control and equal money is a recipe for disaster. How in the hell did no one ever? You know, do they not see that? I get the perception that you know the parent runs away and they're deadbeat. They don't want anything to do anything with anything. And that's not right to, to do that to someone. But that's, you know, I don't know how many times, I mean, does that even really happen that much anymore? I don't know. I'm, well, okay. Yes, it does. I mean, there's people on the channel who I've, I've heard about this from, but, but yeah, it's completely messed, messed up. All right, let me get back over to, uh, so this is where it just gets even just more tragic. Judge Wild Blood added, no professional has suggested that there is anything about this father that render, renders him unsuitable to have contact with his children. Quote, there have been uh, consistent recommendations throughout the eight-year history of these proceedings from a wide spectrum of professionals that contact should take place between the father and the children. All professionals involved in this... Okay, I didn't realize I could do that. All professionals involved in this case have concluded that the mother has alienated the children from the father. 
Judge Wildblood said the children would have nothing to do with their father or his family. So it wasn't just the father that was erased. It was the entire side of the family. And I know this is incredibly common. Unless that toxic ex can manipulate your family to choose them. And then, uh, and then they, will, they will let them do things. Uh, it goes on to say they would not acknowledge cards or presents, uh, expressed unjustified and illogical complaints about his letters, and had false memories, oh my God, I think we all can relate to that one, of how he had behaved towards them. I still get that today. I still get where every once in a while it's like, you know, oh, I remember it this way. <laughs> like, what? I mean, I laugh, but it's, it's, it's not a laughing matter. It's just one of those things where, you know, it's, it's part of a coping mechanism. And we'll get into that as we get through this. Let me see what else we got going on. John says, uh, what the narc does is set up the flying monkeys to say dad is bad. Yeah, that's true. So they hear it from different people. Now my, now my kids repeat the lies as if it was true. I'm so angry they lied and did this. And what's funny, again, it's not funny. What's, what's ironic is how subtle it is. I, I remember having a conversation with my son where I asked him, you know, does your mom, you know, did you ever hear anything? This is after he was 18. You know, do you ever hear anything bad about me? Oh, no, no, no. Mommy never says anything bad about you. I'm like, huh, okay. And then I know I told you guys this story before, but for the new people, you know, an hour or so later, he's like, well, you know, out of the blue, he's like, well, you know, mommy at one point said that, you know, you were trying to get our neighbor fired. <laughs> and I'm like, what? It's like, how the hell, where, where did that come up? Oh, I was going to bed. She was putting me to bed one time. And she goes, you know, your dad's trying to get, you know, John Smith fired. And I'm like, really? I'm like, well, how did you feel about that? You know, I mean, because they were friends of them and stuff like that. You know, I mean, and it's like, but kind of like what John Boston was saying, it's like the kids believe it. The kids are like, oh, okay, well, other people are seeing it, so obviously it's true. Daddy's a scary person, so it must be true. Jorge says, Dwayne, my, my mom did the same, to, same to me every Sunday for about three years. I must have been, uh, had seven years of age. And my dad would never come pick me up. Well, he didn't know. That's what, he said my dad would never come pick me up. Yeah, you know, I asked my dad about that uh, a couple of years ago. We were talking, and, and he's like, "I, yeah, I didn't, you know, that's I never knew you were doing that. I mean, I never, you know, no one ever told me. So it's just, all right, let me get back on this. The judge said it was beyond doubt that the children would suffer significant, quote, significant and long-term emotional harm. He added, quote, I am afraid that the cause of, of that harm lies squarely with his mother, with this mother. Quote, whatever may be her difficulties, she is an adult and a parent with parental responsibilities for her children. That parental responsibility, which she shares with the father, requires her to act in the best interest of the children. It also requires her to promote the relationship between these children and their father, and she has failed to do, or she has failed to do so. So, again, what I was saying a minute ago is, you know, the 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 uh, underlying theme of this is there's no consequence. Nothing is, you know, nothing has happened, and, um, you know. It's just frustrating. Now, I will say there's a second part to this article. Let me just scroll down. Where it says, uh, um, This comes after a woman recently lost a fight over the care of her 12-year-old son after a high court judge concluded that she had alienated the youngster from his father. And this is what I think needs to start happening. The boy, who has been the center of a family court battle between his separated parents for most of his life, was, with, was living with his mother. But Mr. 
Justice Keenan decided that the boy must move to live with his father after deciding the woman had alienated the boy from her ex-husband. The judge says the boy who uh, the boy was suffering emotional and social harm because of his father's absence. He outlined details of the case in a ruling uh, published online. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so that's what now that is what needs to happen. There needs to be a consequence, right? Because and and, and the sad part about it is is then you have people who are trying to do the right thing, who aren't alienating, who can get caught up in this. And I've, I remember seeing an article or a news article a couple of years ago in California, where uh, moms were protesting one of the, I think the court, I think it was in Los Angeles Superior Court, about uh, their ex husbands getting custody of the kids and and the catastrophe on that. And it's like, you know. It, it, Here's the re- okay. So let me just throw this out here. Here's the reality. If you're dealing with somebody who is toxic, more than likely, unless you're fighting with them for custody, they're not going to see the kids. They're not going to waste their time. So let's say, for instance, you get the fifty-fifty. You do the pres- presumptive fifty-fifty. Everyone gets fifty-fifty. Support set fifty-fifty. Yada yada yada. It's fifty-fifty. More than likely, a toxic person who doesn't really give a rat's crap about the kids will see them either that amount of time or they will, what's more typical, is they'll just, you know, oh, well, I can't, I have to work. I have to go out of town. I have a meeting. You know, can you just get the kids? Can you just get the kids? Can you just get the kids? I I mean, and this happens for both men and women. I've had women say that this has happened with their exes, and I've had uh, men say that that's what their ex, uh, the mom is doing, you know, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a pattern type behavior. The problem is, is that let's say in that situation, what you have to do in that situation is you, you see your kids and when they're not seeing it, you go, thank God they're not seeing the kids and you don't do anything. You don't go run into court saying, you know, well, it says 50, 50, but you know, it's really, you know, 99, one and you know, I want more money. Because more than likely, they'll come back and they'll say, oh, no. And then they'll push it. I remember, I know I've mentioned this story before, but I had a friend of mine from work who had basically full custody of of his kids. Mom was doing her own little thing. And I was so angry at the time. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're still paying child support and you have full custody? And and he's like, yeah. Like, that's messed up. You know, that's bold. You, You shouldn't be paying her money. That's crap. You know, she should be paying you, you know, whatever. I was just, I was still angry and bitter about my situation. And what he said to me, and this is, I think this is a very good example of what I kind of deal with, with this channel is that there's things I put out there that I know are difficult concepts for people to, to, uh, to, to hear or to understand or to, because I remember it, like in this conversation, he said, you know what, I'm not going to do it because if I do it, Because of the money, she'll ask for more time and it's actually better for my kids because I can provide them more stability while she's gallivanting around. Sure, I'm paying for her to go hang out and go do stuff with her boyfriend, but in the grand scheme of things, it's better for the kids. And I didn't get it. I did not get it uh, back in the day. Um, I get it now. I absolutely get it now. And he's absolutely right. It is the hardest thing to be able to do, and uh, it's 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 tough. But anyways, so that that's my thought. That would be the best case scenario. Now I want to get into. Oh, before I do that, let me just highlight this. JBF, thank you so very much for the super chat. Thank you. It says uh, JBF says uh, thank you for your channel. It's helped me over the years to keep perspective. Well, uh, thank you and thanks for for the con- contribution. I really appreciate that. So thank you very much. So, all right. Now this kind of rolls into all right. I hit at the beginning. You have to hit this early on. You, you have to be, you, you have to know what battle you're in as quickly as possible. You need to be able to pivot as quickly as possible. 
You need to make sure that you don't put yourself in harm's way. The topic I was mentioning a moment ago or with the person I was talking to in real life, they need to have an understanding of the damage that this person can do to their life. There's already little comments that are coming up about, you know, emotional abuse and domestic violence and stuff like that. And I think one of the <clears throat> best pieces of advice I got early on from this from my brother, who uh, was a uh, in law enforcement, he's retired now, amazingly enough. Um, and he said, look, because when I, was, I filed and I'm like, oh, crap, I can't afford to move. I can't afford to go anywhere. I'm going to have to stay in the house. And he's like, you're an idiot. If you're going to file, if you file and give the paperwork to your ex and you're still in that house, you're an idiot. And if they call me over and she says that you did anything, default, you're going to jail. And then you're dealing with a criminal case and a family court case concurrently. And I was like, holy crap. So I moved out. Um, you know, I know there's people who say, don't move out, you know, stay in the house as long as possible because then you, there's, it's really hard to do custody because you're, you're physically there. But you have to understand what you're dealing with. You have to have an open mind and be realistic about the risks. But then what do you do whenever, like in this situation, this person fought eight years? Eight years this father fought. And he's now given up. Or he stopped. At, at some point, when you've done everything, you've tried everything, You've done, you've, you've ex exhausted every mechanism you possibly can. Sometimes you have to tap the mat and say, okay. And in my mind, you have to, you know, continue to be on the planet and just, see, I, I know in my situation, I did okay, right? In retrospect, I did okay. I got 50-50. Didn't feel like, okay, I'll tell you this, whenever, you know, whenever I quote unquote won and I was divorced and I had 50-50, it did not feel like a victory. It felt like I got run over by a truck. But one of the things that helped me persevere through this was just that you are not thinking to the ex, you're not going to break me. I am not going to give up. I'm not going to crawl under a hole. I'm going to tread water until this family court crap is over. And at the time I was angry and I'm like, and I'm going to watch you freaking hit the wall and burst into flames. And, uh, and that kept me going for the longest time. I'm like, you know what? It's just a few more years, just a few more years, just a few more years. I mean, I was just angry and bitter. And that anger and bitterness actually kept me going. You know, it's like, I'm not giving up. I'm not going to run. I'm not going to, you know, throw everything away. I'm going to hunker down. I'm going to survive. And, you know, I'm going to, once this is over, I'm going to drive up in a brand new Tesla Cybertruck or, you know, Jeep or whatever and rub it in that you did not destroy my life. <laughs> All the while thinking <laughs> she destroyed my life. I think at some point you have to get to the you have to get to the point if everything fails that you that you say you know what I did, it's wrong these people are effing evil there's no reasoning why the only reason and, and, okay the short answer on the reason is this you know them in my opinion you you know them you know who they are you can expose them but if they're able to destroy your reputation, if they're able to destroy your credibility, who's going to listen to you? So tear you down. Say you're abusive. Say you're a horrible human being. Get a protective order. Get a permanent protective order. 
bait you into saying something or doing something, then they can go, oh my God, this is scary. Look what this scary person did. And there's, you know, we have some subscribers, viewers that are female who have got fallen into that trap, as we do also have men who have fallen into that trap. You fall in that trap and the court says, oh my God. And it's, you know, it's over. It's, it's just tough. You know, I mean, that's an understatement of the year. 